There's a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu It's an authentic narration uh, in the book of Tabarani, where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is narrated to have said, "Awwalu ma yuhasabu alayhi al-abdu yom al-qiyamati as-salah." The very first thing, awwal. The very first thing that the slave will be held accountable for on the day of resurrection is the salah, is the prayer. فَإِن صَلُحَتْ If it is correct, صَلُحَ سَائِرُ عَمَلِي Then all the rest of his actions will be correct, will be legit, will be okay. وَإِن فَسَدَتْ But if it is corrupted, if his prayer is messed up, it's jacked up, فَسَدَ سَائِرُ عَمَلِي Then all the rest of his actions will also be messed up. All right. So the Prophet ﷺ is essentially telling us what? Prayer is the foundation. Prayer is the basis. It's what everything else builds on. Now let's take a look at the Qur'an. The Prophet ﷺ is basically summarizing for us what the Qur'an presents to us in a very powerful manner. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Most definitely success has been achieved by the believers. All right. What are their qualities? Who are these believers? Please define. الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ they are those people that in their prayers, they have a lot of quality, they have khushu. We're still calling khushu quality. We're almost there. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنِ اللَّغْوِ They are those people that they constantly avoid indulging into useless things. They don't waste their time. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِلزَّكَاةِ فَاعِدُونَ They are those people who constantly are either giving charity or purifying themselves. They take the initiative in terms of purifying themselves. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِذُونَ They are those people who constantly safeguard their chastity, their modesty, their decency. Alright? إِلَّا عَلَىٰ أَزْوَاجِكِمْ أَوْ مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ غَيْرُ مَلُومِينَ Of course, except in the case of their wives or what the right hand possesses, then in that case they're not to be blamed. فَمَنِ بِتَغَى وَرَاءَ ذَلِكَ فَأُولَيْكَمُ الْعَادُونَ Whoever seeks anything beyond that is then obviously crossing the line. Alright. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِأَمَانَاتِهِمْ وَعَهْدِهِمْ رَاعُونَ they are those people who constantly watch over, they are diligent and they're careful about the word that they've given, the promises they've made, and the trust that has been given to them. Alright? They are those people who constantly watch the timings of the prayers and mind the timings of the prayers. Those are the people they will inherit. What will they inherit? الَّذِينَ يَرِثُونَ الْفِرْدَوْسِ they will inherit the gardens of paradise, the highest stages of paradise, Al-Firdos. Hum fiya khalidun, they'll be there in for all of eternity. Very beautiful, powerful passage. Now, the question I want to ask you guys is, does it, do, I mean, do these people sound like some, like a great group of people? Do they have great qualities? And do things work out for them at the very end? Obviously, yes, they do. All right, sequence is very important in, in Quran. In a, in, a, in a passage like this sequence is very important. They have a lot of good qualities and things work out for them in the end. But where does everything start? What's the very first quality Allah mentions for them? Salah. Salah. They have quality in their prayer. When they have quality in their prayer, everything built on top of that. Everything was built on top of that and everything worked out. On the flip side, take a look at the next passage here. Surah number 74, Suratul Muddathir. All right? This is one of those passages where it tells us it's a little bit of a more subtle conversation between the people of Jannah, the people of Paradise, and the people of Hell. Alright? كُلُّ نَفْسٍ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ رَهِينَ Each and every single soul is being held as a deposit in exchange for what it's done. إِلَّا أَصْحَابَ الْيَمِينَ Except for the people of the right hand side. In Arabic that's an expression that means the good people. فِي جَنَّات Where are these awesome people? They're in Paradise. They're in the gardens of Paradise. Yet While they're chilling in Jannah, they start having a conversation. Start having a discussion. What are they talking about? What are they having a conversation about? Anil Mujrimin. Mujrim in the Arabic language, in classical Arabic, means a convicted criminal. Somebody who's been tried, somebody who's been, you know, convicted of their crime, and somebody who's been sentenced. Convicted, sentenced criminal. So they start talking about these criminals, and of course they're talking about the people in hell. Right? <clears throat> So Allah now allows them to fulfill their curiosities about the people of hell by talking to the people of hell. So they say, مَا سَلَكَكُمْ فِي سَقَرْ 
What led you into the blazing, fiery pits of hell? What took you there? You used to live down the street from us. Your kids went to the same school. We shopped at the same stores. You seem like, you know, like you had things together. What led you there? So now these people from beyond, right? After everything is said and done, these people are explaining to us. These people are telling us exactly what went wrong with them. I would pay attention to this. I would pay attention to this. These people are in hell and they're telling us how they got in hell. I would listen. So they say, Qalu, they say, Lam nakumin al musallin. We were not from those people who pray regularly. Now there's a, that's a very interesting construction. It doesn't say, Lam nakun nusalli. It doesn't say we didn't used to pray. No, no. It says we were not from those people who prayed regularly. Meaning, Fajr today, not so much tomorrow, maybe Dhuhr, see about Asr, got some Maghrib, went to sleep before Isha, right? We weren't from those people who prayed regularly. Okay, that's one problem. Now what happens when you become lackadaisical in your prayer, in your Salah? You start to crumble, you start to fall apart spiritually. Now cracks start to appear in other parts of your life. Now you have less motivation to do the good that you do, all the other types of good that you do. So, وَلَمْ نَكُنْ نُطْعِمُ الْمِسْكِينَ We didn't used to feed the poor. We didn't used to feed the poor. Right? So now we became lazy about all the other good social goods that we were doing, all the other good deeds that we were involved in. Now that I'm not praying, and I'm not giving money in charity, what do I have an excess of? I have an excess of time and money. So I got to use it somehow. I got to kill it somewhere. I got to do something with it. So what do I do? وَكُنَّا نَخُودُ مَعَ الْخَائِضِينَ And we started indulging into useless things with other people who constantly indulge in useless things. That's it. Start rolling with the crew now. Right? Now when that starts happening, now you're living this complete life of decadence and apathy and, you know, spiritual depravity. You're living this type of a life. Now... What happens from time to time? One of two things. Number one, you start to feel a little guilty at times. You look in the mirror and you don't like what you see. And you know what that is? That oftentimes that little feeling of, man, what am I doing with myself? What am I doing with my life? You know what that is? That's your iman clawing and scratching at the surface. Your iman has been buried alive, but it's gasping, it's breathing for air, and it's trying to claw back out. It's trying to claw back out. The second thing that happens in those situations is if you're really lucky, if you're blessed by Allah, somebody comes along in your life and says, brother, sister, come on, why don't we go to the masjid? Like, come on, let's go to class. Like, what are you doing? Somebody comes along and just tries to give you a little boost, helps you out a little bit. Is there to support you spiritually. So, but what ends up happening oftentimes in those types of situations, people start to become defensive. People become defensive. No, I'm not a bad person. Or I'm not doing anything bad. Or no, don't tell me what to do. You don't know me. You don't know me. You can't tell me what to do. You don't know what I'd, what I, what I, what I'd be doing in the rest of my time. Don't try to judge me. We become very defensive. And when we become defensive, we become very offensive. To ourselves, to other people, and even to Allah. We behave very offensively. So what did these people say they did then? When they started to feel guilty and they got defensive, what did they do? We started denying and refusing and rejecting the day of retribution. Then you start telling people, you know what? Why don't you go and live your fairy tale? Right? Why don't you go and prepare for the hereafter? Whatever that means. Right? I'm going to go have a good time. I'm going to deal with the here and the now. I'm going to make sure I'm doing good over here. You go prepare for the afterlife or whatever you call it. Right? So we started behaving like that. Until reality came to pass. Until the truth all was shown to us as it is. Death came and we found out what it was. So these are two sides. Good people, the very first thing was they had quality in their prayer. The bad people here, what's the very first thing that went wrong with them? Salah. We stopped praying regularly. That's the very first thing that fell apart in their lives. And then look, everything else crumbled. Everything else fell apart. And that's that again, that basic, very simple analogy of a foundation. But we have to understand what that means.